Hey everyone, today we're gonna to do a ship tour of one of the MSC's older ships that's in the US market right now, the MSC Magnifica. It's a beautiful little older ship. I had a great time on the cruise and we're gonna go through all of the public spaces. Let's go check it out. Hey everyone, John here from Bite Size Cruises. Today we are gonna do a tour of the beautiful MSC Magnifica. Right now, we are starting here on the pool deck. So the pool deck is very spacious, very nice. This is not a huge cruise ship. So what you're gonna see here is pretty reasonable amount of chairs and space for the deck size. I did not have any issues at all trying to get a deck chair. It would never looked really crowded. My ceiling was not completely full, so I will say that right up front, uh, but full enough to where there could have been chair hogs and everything. This is where they do a lot of the parties, like the snow party and the sail away parties. Uh, but all in all, it is, a, uh, it is a very spacious pool deck. The pool is a, a decent size as well. It was never overly crowded. There's also an indoor pool, which we'll see in a little bit, which I think helps a lot with this, they do retract the roof on the indoor pool. So a lot of times that area tends to be a little more crowded than this one because it's smaller. Uh, there's a bar right there and it just fills up a little bit. There's way more hot tubs, but this is a really nice area. You can see the top of the ship here that it is a little dated as it relates to other cruise ships that you may be on that are newer, but it's a beautiful pool deck. Everything is in very good shape. They were constantly maintaining things and fixing things along the way. So it is a really, really nice pool deck. I'm gonna walk right through the pool area here. I just wanna give you like a really good view of everything so that you can uh, see all the little nooks and crannies. They do have seating on both sides that are underneath. So in case it is drizzling or it's a little chilly out and you wanna sit underneath and get some cover, you can certainly do that. Hot tubs are big. Uh, there's plenty of space, like I said. I'm not going to talk through the whole tour. I'm going to let you see things. Uh, we'll play some music and just let you enjoy the tour a little bit since it's all about the ship and not about me. Then we're going to come up on uh, one of our bars here. So. Plenty of seating around the bar as well. The bars were never super crowded. One of the things you will see on MSC is all of the bars have one of those super awesome fancy espresso machines. It's an Italian cruise line. You are gonna get some good coffee uh, and it is great. All right, now we're up on the upper pool deck. This is also where you see a lot of people walking in the morning, not so much a track, walking track here. Uh, there is a little bit of a walking track, but there is plenty of room here, obviously, to walk. I like to do these tours very early in the morning, so I'm not uh, kind of obstructing anyone or getting in the way. So you can see the beautiful early morning here. And again, you can tell it's not overly crowded anywhere on the ship, especially out on the pool decks. This is a beautiful day here. We are sailing out of Miami, so the weather is gorgeous. So just not a lot of people out here. We are in the indoor, uh, right above the indoor pool here, which we will show you uh, a little bit later in the video. But that's where this little uh, curve around goes to. So if you curve around here and you make a left at the door here, you would go right into the indoor pool. Otherwise, you're going to continue walking here back to the back of the ship. As a frame of reference, we are on deck 14 at the moment. This guy enjoying the early sunrise out here like we all do on our <laughs> on our phones hilarious it's gonna take you to the back of the ship we are gonna pass by the little like kids uh, fun area here this is not a great ship for kids not much going on there's not a lot of things for kids to do you know they don't have big water slides or anything like that Obviously, people bring their families, and MSC has really good uh, child care, so you can certainly bring your kids. This guy's filming the sunrise with uh, several cameras, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, and then we're going to get to the back of the ship here. We're again going to head up another deck to the upper, upper pool deck, or the upper, upper decks, sun decks, and uh, we'll check out some more of that. These older ships, as you can tell, it's more of a traditional cruising experience. There's not a ton of bells and whistles. You don't have a lot of like things blocking everything with things going on, uh, but you do get to see a lot of the fun uh, kind of areas that are wide open, which I really like. There's plenty of room if you just wanted to come up here. There's chairs up here during the day. Just hang out, relax, read a book, watch the sun, watch other ships go by. Uh, it is really, really beautiful out here, and it takes you a little bit back to the older days of cruising where, where there weren't 5 million things going on, which is good and, you know, good and bad, whatever you prefer on your cruise. I prefer to have more things to do, but there is something to be said for this old traditional experience of cruising that's very peaceful and, uh, and quiet. It's more of a relaxing vacation. Harkens back to the time when cruise ships were actually a vessel to get you to different ports, not so much the vacation themselves. But... I like both, and uh, I think it's great. Here's the back of the ship up on deck 15 again. Just stunning views. We are in Ocean Key here today. Get a quick look at the MSC Ocean Reserve, Ocean Key, private island here. It is beautiful, not crazy built up, but built up enough that there are plenty of things to do and it is a beautiful, beautiful island. You do have the old school shuffleboard here, which I love. But again, not a lot of crazy things going on, especially during the days. This was a very port intensive cruise. We didn't have any sea days, so there was really nothing to do on the ship other than relax, read and hang out by the pool. So if that is your jam, this is the right cruise and itinerary for you. It was a four-day cruise. We did an overnight at Ocean Key, which was really nice. Now we're up here on the upper, upper, upper level, which is deck 15. And this is the sports court where they play tennis, which is interesting because you don't usually see that. Obviously pickleball now because that is all the rage. And then basketball and soccer as well. Now we're going to head into the buffet area. They do have a bar right at the front of the buffet, which is great. And then as you head into the buffet, I I've said it a few times on the vlogs and different things, but if you haven't watched them, there are not as many options in the buffet for MSC maybe as there are on other cruise lines. I don't think that's a good or bad thing. One of the things that I think it's good for is I think there's a little more quality control. So at every meal, you're going to see pretty much the makings of a charcuterie board. You're going to have meats and cheeses. You're going to have pizza at every meal, even breakfast. There are breakfast pizzas. There is There are plenty of things to eat, especially for breakfast. You have all your eggs, omelets, all the different things that you would normally get. You have potatoes, bacon, sausage, all of those other things. What I did notice is there was no iced tea. There were only a few juices, and obviously they do have great coffee, so the coffee's out. And then for lunch and dinner, not the largest selection of foods, but everything was really good. Their pastas and pizza, pizza is really, really good. And the buffet is very large for the size of the ship. For part of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there were areas of the buffet that were closed just because there wasn't enough demand. There's also a bar in the back of the buffet, so you have no shortage of places to grab a drink uh, or some type of a coffee or anything like that that you would like. The one thing I do love about older ships is a lot of times they have a little bit of an outdoor area where you can have your meals and eat outside at the buffet. I love this, especially off the back of the ship because a lot of them now just have it in like the pool area. But sorry about the bright light here, but as we come outside, you get to see this really awesome little outdoor area where you could eat at the buffet, which is really, really great off the back of the ship. It is very bright out. Now we're going to head into the indoor pool area. I love this area. 
This area also um, does get a little bit crowded during the day, but the upper deck does not get as crowded during the day, obviously, for obvious reasons that people are in the pool or the hot tubs. Uh, but it is a beautiful area. They do have a, another awesome bar down there with another awesome espresso machine. And then you can see there's plenty of room here. It is a retractable roof. So if it is nice out, that roof is open. It's a nice size pool. Um, so I love this. I love the fact that they have an additional pool where it's not everybody just crowded into one little area. As you can see, the hot tubs, always popular. Uh, not a ton of kids on this cruise, so no kids swimming in the hot tubs as is normal on most of the newer ships. So yeah, great area here. And then now we're gonna head all the way down to deck five and we're gonna check out one of the main dining rooms. This is the Ladera restaurant. Uh, this is at the back of the ship on deck five. And again, I try not to be very disruptive when I do these tours. So I'm not gonna go in and walk around the entire dining room while the people are cleaning and working. Just wanna give you a little look at what it looks like uh, and then we can move on. So then we're gonna come out here and you're gonna have two bars here. You're gonna have, well, you're gonna have several bars. So this is the Lagochi bar, uh, which is really nice. There are several bars on this fifth deck and we'll explore all of them. And again, all of them are gonna have those really nice espresso machines. We're gonna wind out here in the little like atrium area, which was really nice. You have a few things in this area going on. You're gonna have, uh, you know, guest services out here. And then we're gonna wander a little bit towards the front of deck five. There's nothing else really going on on deck five other than the medical centers at the front, which I did not film and the bottom of the uh, the lounge of the theater, sorry. And then as you can see here, they have the little atrium area where they do have someone playing uh, the piano a lot during the day. They also have a saxophone player out here during the day. Really, really nice area. Uh, again, pretty quiet. This was not a very crazy cruise. It was pretty empty and pretty quiet, which I enjoy. But um, all in all, really nice. Great areas here, always places to sit, hang out, listen to some music. Really, really nice. And this is the other side of the bar here. Again, those amazing espresso machines are all over the ship. It's incredible how much money they spend on those. Uh, on espresso machines, but it is amazing. Their coffee is fantastic. Now we're gonna head up to deck six here. And we're gonna look at one of the other main dining rooms, which is the Quattro Vetri Bar. Quattro Venti, Quattro Venti Bar, sorry, and restaurant. Uh, so this place, again, what I'm trying to do here is just give you an idea of what it looks like where you're gonna be sitting, what's going on here, so that you have a good idea of where things are. And what it looks like, this is again at the aft of deck six. So right above the Ladera restaurant is the Quattro Venti. Just one deck up and they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner here depending on days and times. Really nice, the service was excellent. And we're gonna wander out as we wander out. You have two bars here, one on each side. You have the ruby bar and the purple bar. This is the ruby bar. We will see the purple bar shortly. Again, espresso machine, catch the theme. Uh, there is coffee everywhere. Then we're gonna wander out. There are a ton of shops and a little like mini mall here on deck six. So plenty of places if you're looking for something, if you'd like to get some jewelry that's way too expensive uh, or any of your you know, sundries, there's an MSC shop. There's a ton of things going on here. You have your uh, MSC travel agency, which is where you could do your excursions. It's a little bit of a misnomer there, but that's the basic excursion desk. Check out some more of the shops here on deck six, as well as we wander around. This looks down into that atrium on deck five, where they have the uh, piano player and the you know, saxophonist and all the different entertainment during the evening down here and during the day at some points.
again, more shops and different things going on here. Here's the other side, which is the purple bar. Again, espresso for everyone, which I love. I'm here for it. Deck six is really the most active of all the decks. So you're gonna see a ton of things here. I'm gonna show you quickly. There are meeting spaces. So if you did bring a group on and you needed to have a meeting or had something going on, this is a great place to do that. There's me walking into the meeting space. Just give you a quick look behind the curtain, so to speak. So you do your presentation here, your business pitch, whatever it is you're doing. Then we're gonna come out here, we're gonna see some more shops and we're gonna see the Topazia bar as we wander out here. But there are, again, plenty of spaces to Pick up some things if you need them. You can obviously buy liquor, uh, which is duty free. You could buy some, you know, sunscreen, candies, cookies, different things like that if you need them. The Tabaz Tapazio bar here is pretty quiet. They do have music here at night. Uh, again, amazing, huge espresso machine. It's literally crazy. It's at every bar. There is an amazing espresso machine. I, I don't, it's mind boggling, but it's great. Patio bar backs up almost directly to the Tiger bar and the Tiger bar is where they do karaoke and some of the game shows. So a little of that does bleed over into here and there were a few bands in here and if they weren't loud then that kind of sound kind of bled in but it wasn't overly distracting on most of the nights but it is odd that there's two like back to back right there but both are really nice. Good time at both. And speaking of the Tiger bar we are gonna wind around here and wind right into that Tiger Bar. All right, here we go into the Tiger Bar. This bar's huge. It is uh, kind of almost like a loungy theater type space. Big enough that they do a lot of the different things in here. No issues getting drinks or doing anything. It's a great place to hang out during the day as well if you're reading or just wanna kind of have a chill space. Uh, it's really, really nice and quiet during the day, very quiet during the day. It's a high traffic area as well. So if you are in here at night, you'll see tons of people just wandering through. Uh, so it's pretty good design here that they do some of the shows and karaoke and things because people just wander into there and then these steps of course go up to the next level and then here we are in the poker room. So this is just a nice little loungy space here. Somebody's got to fix those curtains. I didn't see that when I was filming. Uh, but yeah, so this is just a small poker room here. I didn't see anything going on in this room the entire cruise so I'm not a hundred percent sure what they use it for but cool space then last but not least on deck six here we're gonna go check out the Royal Theater that's right it's called the Royal Theater how dare you MSC call it the Royal Theater but we're gonna wander in here theaters are really nice size there's no bad seats I, I sat tried to sit everywhere to kind of get a good feel of kind of how the show looks from all the different directions. There is a balcony section that it was great. Um, again, the, you know, obviously you could sit all the way in the back here. You could see everything. There is a little bit of an overhang if you're all the way in the back here, but it doesn't affect your sight line if you are sitting down. It is a large theater. Again, these older cruise ships tend to have larger theaters because there's nothing else going on at the time of the show. Not like the newer cruise ships where there's, you know, 50 different things going on. So, and they do multiple showings of different shows. On the older ships, there's one thing going on. They do it once and that's it. Uh, they do two show times a night. Obviously, uh, there's a 7.30 and a 10.30 show. 
but other than that, it's not like they do shows on multiple days. There's no big Broadway shows. We're then going to head up to deck seven. All right, here we are up on deck seven at the Lamentista Lounge. This area is awesome. This is what they used in essence as like the comedy club. Again, we start at the back of deck seven here in the aft section. So this place is uh, very large. This is where the main dining rooms are on five and six. Uh, plenty of room in here. They have the diamond party in here as well. There were lots of things going on here throughout the course of the trip. So this is a great place, great place to see a little show or a comedy show. Uh, plenty of room. Once again, another great place to hang out. If you want to be inside for like sail away, just look at the beautiful views while you relax in here. Great place to hang out during the day and chill out, read a book, knit, crochet, whatever it is that you do. Uh, so this is a great spot for that really cool lounge. We're going to wind out of here and we're going to go through the photo gallery. They don't, they don't have a traditional photo gallery here. It's more of these cool, uh, this is on the opposite side of like the sports bar. So they have a lot of these sports pictures, which are really beautiful and really nice. This leads up to the actual photo area where you can look at your pictures on the kiosks. If there were any taken of you throughout the trip. And then uh, there are also a photo shop where you can buy those photos if you'd like uh, through an actual person. You can buy GoPros, you can buy memory cards, anything, anything like that that you need. I was impressed that they had all the new GoPros. We were on uh, Norwegian Escape a few weeks ago and they had all older GoPros. Uh, they did have brand new stuff here. I'm sure it's not cheap or even market price. It's probably expensive, but it's nice that they do have things here that you can buy if you do in fact need them. And then as you come to the end of the hallway here, there's, uh, again, this little overlook that looks down into the uh, kind of the atrium there. Here's the other side of that photo gallery, just to give you a kind of good look at everything. And have all the stuff set up. This is also where, like, the Cyber Cafe starts, too, which is kind of where the old school, like, internet lounge And then we're going to wander right into the sports bar. I love the sports bar on uh, MSC. I think they do a great job with this. It's big. There is always there are always cool sporting events going on, like cricket or F1 or some type of soccer, football, basketball, whatever's going on. They have everything on in here. There are plenty of spots you can see to just sit up here on the bar, hang out, and watch sports. I love this area. I raved about it on Seascape. They have a great uh, sports bar there with little booths that you could sit in that have your own individual like big screen TVs. This is a great area. The bar here is huge. Do they have an espresso machine? Absolutely they do. They have a lot of like signed things here too as well from like athletes. It's a really cool spot. Again, never crowded. This area was never crowded. I was in here so many times during the day and the evening and it was very, very quiet. This is a good spot too if you just want to have a drink before dinner and not have to fight all the crowds. There is a pool table in the back here. It was only open during certain times, like when the bar was open. So some people were disappointed in that, but it's fine. I mean, they, they wanted, I guess, somebody there to just maintain it and keep an eye on it. This here is the Cuba Lounge, Cigar Lounge on the ship. This is a beautiful room uh, with these beautiful leather sofas. Just a really cool space. I never saw a person in here throughout the entire cruise. Again, just like the poker room, really interesting. They have like these cool spaces and there was literally no one in here ever. So uh, cool spot. I, I never saw anybody working the bar in here either. So that might be why. Uh, but it does look like you could purchase cigars and those type of things. I just never saw anyone in here at all, unless you maybe you have to ask first. But again, you have the little overlook of the atrium there. It's a really cool spot.
And then we're going to wander up further on deck seven through the art gallery. One of the other things I like is MSC does not usually do a traditional art gallery, which I really enjoy. They do have a lot of uh, stuff here from their world cruises. They've done two world cruises. They're going to do another one as well coming up in 2026. But um, they have little plaques from all the different stops on the world cruise. I think that's super cool. And then there's really nothing as far as an art gallery goes. There are a few sculptures, but they don't do the Park West thing, which I enjoy because you see that on enough ships everywhere you go. So we wander down here, Oriental Plaza's on your left there, which is the specialty dining restaurant, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. I just wanted to wander through this whole area so you got a good look at all the different nooks and crannies here on deck seven, where you can hang out, sit down, relax, do any of those things that you would like to do. So take a look at the card room in a moment. So the Oriental Plaza is the specialty dining restaurant on board. It is kind of Asian fusion. I would say it's not really fusion. It's just an Asian restaurant. So they have all different types of Asian food from uh, Thai food, Japanese food, Chinese food, uh, and then, you know, any number of other Asian dishes, hence the name Oriental Plaza. Uh, it was really good. I ate here a few times and I had great meals. I ate here for lunch once and dinner twice, and it was great. I did dim sum once. Just a great, great place, great restaurant, never crowded. Nothing on the ship was crowded. This is the library. Uh, again, didn't see anyone in here the entire trip. It's really funny. A lot of these rooms just went largely unused. I can imagine these spaces got get used a lot on like a world cruise because you need kind of like new scenery. They probably do different things like little talks or just get togethers in some of those rooms. And then there's the card room, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. This is the other side uh, where there's swag from the world cruises, the other world cruise that they went on. Uh, I love that. I love when they show all those plaques that are given to them by all the different ports. I think it's really interesting and very, very cool. Deck seven was the one deck where there wasn't, there was pockets of things going on, but it was also a lot of space to just kind of wander around and enjoy yourself. I do think that's because the casino's on this deck uh, and they kind of made this a little more chill. But here's the card room real quick that we'll take a look at. I did see people in here playing like games during the day. Uh, and doing different things, so that's pretty cool. Now let's go wander into the casino. For this size ship, the casino's pretty large. There were a decent amount of people in here. It never felt overly crowded like it usually does on a larger ship where it's probably the same size casino. Lots of newer games, lots of older games, uh, table games, they had the roulette machines that you could play. I thought the casino was great. I won a good chunk of money on the first night and then donated it all back throughout the cruise. Uh, there's a bar in here. It is great. It's not crowded at all. And then again, you have all your table games and everything else that you could play. But overall, this is a beautiful casino. Uh, if you do like to do a little of the gambling while you're on your cruise, this is a nice place to do it. The, everybody seemed like they were having a great time. And this does look down into that little atrium as well from here. It's a very nice casino. A couple things left on our journey here. We have the next cruise desk where it's like your future cruise. There were people here all the time signing up for new cruises, which is awesome. There's one of your little uh, assign your card things. Then I did take a little quick peek into the spa here. I just wanted to give you an idea. Again, I don't like to be intrusive on these tours. So uh, I don't want to bother people while they're working out, but I just wanted to give you a quick little look at what this spa entryway looks like here. It's really beautiful. And then last but not least, we're going to wander into the T32 Disco. 
the first two days of the cruise, I thought this was like the teen club because this is where the kids club is. It's really weird to me that they have a disco, like a nightclub, like obviously right next to the arcade here, which is fine. There's only a few little games and the 3D, the 4D kind of uh, cinema in there, which is all good. So I naturally, I thought when I went in here, I like was wandering the ship the first couple days, I thought this was the teen nightclub. So there's a little bowling alley over here, which is really cool. So I was like, oh, this is a cool spot for the kids. And it's huge. I was like, this is really big for like a teen club considering it's a small ship and there's not a lot of kids on here. But then I asked somebody um, and they were like, no, that's this is the nightclub for the ship, which I thought was really bizarre considering it's one right next to the arcade and then two. And obviously they have a big dance floor here in a bar and everything. Uh, so that should have been a, a, a pretty good indication to me, which it wasn't. There is a little outdoor area here as well, which is beautiful. And then as we come around the other side, you're going to see that the actual kids clubs are in the entryway to the nightclub. And I get maybe like the kids aren't here at night. It just seemed like a weird spot to put a nightclub like right next to the kid. Like these are the kids clubs over here on the left. It's, it's really weird. But it, it was a cool place. Um, they had music and a DJ in here every night. Uh, great time. So thanks so much for watching our tour. We would love for you to subscribe to our channel. Once again, I'm John from Bite Size Cruises. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.